Welcome in everyone and thank you for listening to the 139th ever episode of the Missouri Sports Podcast brought to you by 106 Apparel and recording from the Revel Advertising Studio in beautiful Springfield, Missouri. I'm one of your hosts Cameron Albert alongside my good friend and fellow Mizzou fan Kyle DeVries. How are you doing today Kyle? I'm great Cameron. I've been playing that uh been playing that MLB the show. Oh yeah. Um I think I'm better now than I was a week ago. Really been I really been going to town on that uh road to the show. Yep. Mode. I've been working my way up through the ranks. I'm in AAA now, AAA Memphis for the Cardinals. Oh, did you choose to go to the Cardinals? Yeah, kind of. <laughs> was it, it was like, do you have any team yes. that you're interested in particular? Yes. You're like, Cardinals. Yeah, I, I try to always say, like, nope. Just send me I kind of regretted doing it, actually. I thought well, it would be better just to let start another, just natural selection just happen. Start but another play true. through. I'm a, I'm a starting pitcher, and I bat on the days I'm not pitching. Oh, yeah. You got to do it. And i got to say, I'm... It's, I'm, I, I, I have to be close to the majors at, the, at this point. I'm batting like 350, and I'm striking what everybody season? out. I don't think it'll send you up in your – it definitely won't send you up to the majors in your first season. I think I'm at the beginning of my second okay. year. You could maybe get there by the end of your second year. Be interesting. Um, so you were always an Xbox yeah. player and never have been exposed to MLB The Show since it was always a PlayStation exclusive. Correct. I, on the other hand, am a – the show you're veteran a, you're a legend already oh yeah oh i i i can't remember what game it was but i created a right fielder who broke the record for career home runs and rbi and wow. hits that's all yeah. the major categories yep greatest hitter ever that's a good player they call him. yeah <laughs> um kyle you missed out this past weekend when we cameron and i got together and we watched mortal Kombat. oh yeah how was that oh yeah it was very good. good very good if you if you're listening and you played the games, I think the movie is right there, like exactly what you would want. It's honestly like a remade version of the 1995 movie in that it just is like very fan servicey and like gives you the moments that the fans of the games want to see, mm-hmm. but in a updated CGI kind of way. Were you happy with the plot? The plot isn't that important. There you go. So, yes, I was happy with it. <laughs> All about expectations. If you kind of just want to turn your brain off a little bit, just have a little bit of fun, don't expect, you know, an Oscar-worthy mm-hmm. film. Just see some cool action and some fan service. See some cool characters from the games. It is exactly that. Yeah, not watching or not really playing the games much. I don't know a ton about them. Like, watching the movie made me wish that I had so that I yeah had more backstory right to like get excited about yeah yeah there's definitely some like references and stuff that it's like clear if you I feel like if you didn't know them you'd be like okay clearly that's a reference that I'm just not quite getting mm-hmm. because it's pretty on the nose a lot of the time oh well, it's nice to have you guys there to be like oh so what were they talking about oh yeah I got that Mortal Kombat lore just like ready to go <laughs> <laughs> uh Kyle, this week we're going to talk about the NFL draft and the Mizzou players that may or may not be drafted. Uh, But before we do that, don't forget everyone to check us out on YouTube if you just listen to us. Um, We are on YouTube. Even if you don't want to watch the episodes there, we do appreciate it if you go and subscribe. Um, If you are watching us, give us a like if you could. If you're watching and don't subscribe, subscribe. That'd be cool and uh leave us a comment and we'll we'll have a little banter in the comment section tell us where you think some of these players are going to be drafted and if you want to be more involved with the show you can support us on patreon and that can be found at patreon.com slash missouri sports pod kyle before we get into the draft talk there's some news out of the state of ohio and that is that a former blue chip recruit from the state of Missouri in football, wide receiver Jamison Williams, has entered the transfer portal. Yeah, he was the former number one player in Missouri, according to the major recruiting services, two years ago, 2019 class. Uh, elite speed wide receiver uh, was kind of starting to. Uh, scratched the surface of his potential at, at Ohio State. He played two seasons there. First first season, scored a touchdown. Second season, he had two more touchdowns and 
I don't know, 150 yards or so. Kind of, kind of just the all or nothing kind of guy. You know, short screen passes or or home run deep uh, shots, deep yeah. shot kind of guy. So, um, yeah, Jameson Williams is in the portal, and I would certainly keep an eye on this one. I, I, he's close with Mookie Cooper, uh, and Coach Drink. He's he's got a little bit of a reputation. He's making moves. He's making moves, and uh, I I feel pretty confident. There's a pretty good feel pretty confident that that Williams will be a Missouri Tiger, and if he does transfer here, I believe he'll be immediately eligible. Ooh. Talk about an upgrade of I mean just Dominic Lovett, Mookie Cooper, potentially Jameson Williams, all these guys being on the squad next year, immediately eligible. It's gonna be fun. Just missing uh, Luther Burden, and then there you, you got, go. You know, the greatest uh, Mizzou receiving core in history. Pretty much, just about. If all these guys stick around two years from now, we could be talking about something like that. Um, not to get people too excited. Yeah, that was a, that was a little bit of. Okay, you're the one. You're the one saying. No, like, no, no. You no. Feel pretty good about. I agreed. Coming here. No, I okay. agreed with you. I, okay. I, I, that was probably a little too excited. Uh, too much excitement yeah. on our part. But, okay. Considering like Doriel Green Beckham was here like a couple yeah. of years ago, but. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, my, They've, we'll, we'll a lot simmer, of simmer down a little bit. A lot of potential, though. Yeah. He's not he's not on the roster yet. Correct. We have neither, a tendency to do that. Neither is Luther Burden. <laughs> uh, but, yeah, he went to Cardinal Ritter. He was the number 82 player nationally in his recruiting class and the number 13 wide receiver. And it seemed like even though he started to scratch the surface last year at Ohio State, I think they basically – I mean, they're just going to keep bringing in five-star guys. So – if uh, if it looked like his spot was getting taken by a younger player, then I mean that's I think that's kind of the same thing that kind of happened to Mookie Cooper. So yeah, I was reading an article um, from an Ohio State uh, blog or something like that, and they were they were saying the wide receiver may be their deepest position on a team loaded with the best players in the country. So it makes all the sense in the world that if you kind of feel like maybe you aren't going to get as much playing time as you would hope. Uh, there might be a little bit more playing time available at another destination. So I did this when uh, Mookie Cooper transferred to Missouri. Um, maybe I'll, I'll save. I will save a little bit of analysis for if he actually does come to Missouri. How about that? Because this is just still a possibility at this point. Um, is there any other news that we need to talk about before we jump into the draft? It's kind of a quiet week. Uh, no transfer news really. There's a couple of guys out there that. Uh, we heard they're transferring, but, you know, not a whole lot of, like, Mizzou-related basketball transfer news this week. So Any day now, a uh, scholarship is going to be filled with somebody that we've never heard of. So yeah. be ready for that. <laughs> All right. So it is NFL draft season. And we are actually recording a day early so that uh, we can get our draft analysis out there so people can potentially listen to it uh, before the draft happens. We're going to make some predictions. And Producer Cameron has something to say. Uh, I was just going to say we're doing it for that reason and not because we want to watch, actually watch, watch the, the draft. draft. Yeah, well, <laughs> that was what I had in mind whenever I was thinking we could record today. Was, well, both. I want to watch the first yeah. round tomorrow, but I don't think any Mizzou players are going to hear their name called tomorrow night. But That's true. Hey, don't, don't give your predictions just, <laughs> just Spoiler alert. Yeah, yeah, Save yeah. it. All right, so we're going to run down the list of players that potentially could be drafted and um, – I think we'll just start at the top, and uh, I had you rank um, the following six players. Larry Roundtree, Larry Borum, Tyree Gillespie, Nick Bolton, Damon Hazleton, and Joshua Bledsoe in order of when you think they'll be drafted. And I did the same thing, and we'll go through and see if our lists match, and we'll talk about each player and give our official prediction for what round we think they're going to be drafted in. And I think we probably both have the same guy at the top of the list, and that is Nick Bolton, uh, linebacker. And I was looking at his draft profile on NFL.com. He got a prospect grade of 6.33, which they say will, he will be a starter within his first two seasons. So a pretty high grade for him. And they gave this overview of him as a player. Again, this is NFL.com. When you think about strong, forceful inside linebackers, Bolton is the type of player you might be envisioning. He's going to fall below typical NFL starter standards from a size standpoint, but his rugged frame and forceful demeanor help make up for it. 
play recognition and pursuit instincts help carry him to the football, and he's a message-sending striker when he gets the runner squared up. He has functional short area bursts between the tackles, but will struggle to run down the outside run if he's not close enough to the action. He will need to learn hev- lean heavier on his instincts to help him speed up because of his size and speed limitations. Bolton plays with good field recognition when dropping into the zone and has a history of making plays on the football in coverage. Yeah, I'd say that. I mean, that sums it up pretty well. Um, yeah, I mean, he, he's got a nice, like, broad frame, but he has kind of short arms, and uh, he, he's very strong, but, yeah, he's really not, like, he's not, he doesn't have, like, elite size or speed. And, yeah, I definitely think he's going to play on the inside. He's a, run, he's a run stuffer. He's a physical tackler, but he doesn't have great top-end speed. He does have pretty good short area quickness, like good closing speed. We saw that quite a bit at Mizzou. Like once he's close to you, he's gonna he's gonna wrap you up. Yeah. But he's not gonna run you. He's not gonna chase you down across the field necessarily. And just an incredibly solid tackler. Like yeah. it was a shocking surprise when somebody got away from him in the open field. Like mm-hmm. when he had his sights on him and the player was in front of him. Yeah. Yeah, his coverage skills are not elite either, but but good. He kind of ha- he he's very smart and kind of will bait the quarterback maybe into making a bad throw. And he had several pick sixes or mm-hmm. almost pick sixes at Mizzou. But um, yeah, I I thought it was interesting that they kind of brought up the his play recognition, just kind of the mental side of his mm-hmm. game. Obviously, it's really easy for draft sites to analyze players' physical abilities, which obviously that jumps off the page with Nick Bolton, but. I really think that was one thing that separated him at Missouri and allowed him to see the field quickly and be effective quickly was his ability to um, understand the playbook and diagnose plays that the other team was running. And um, he's such a smart player, such just a football mind. And really from the get go, just he was never he was never bad. He, He was never on the field and developing. You know, he was just like immediately an impact whenever um, he he played and he he saw a little bit of of uh, of play time his freshman year, um, but really those two full seasons that he played that he was a starter he was just a beast. Yeah, uh, first team All SEC and a Butkus Award finalist in 2020, and uh, led the team with 95 tackles and seven and a half tackles for loss, including two sacks in just 10 games. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Some, it, it seemed like he was very durable too you know i think that's that's almost like a trait a, a yeah. skill is uh not getting injured <laughs> you know le- le- knowing how to tackle safely i guess if you want to put it that way but yeah. um he's a guy that during the season i really watching him i really felt like he would be a first round pick um i think that he's kind of dropped a little bit in the off season and we were talking about it a little bit before. I, I tend to think that the off season is when the guys with the elite measurables rise up in the boards and maybe the guys that have those high ceilings and didn't put up crazy stats in the season but maybe are late bloomers or have the uh, have the potential to be high ceiling guys can, can yeah. creep up the boards. They kind of catch up a little bit to the players that just performed really well during their college season. Mm-hmm because so. and, it, and it makes sense i mean teams are looking not only for college production they know that they have the staff and the trainers and everything to you know get a guy up to speed and maybe teach him a few things if he has the elite physical traits that they're looking for mm-hmm. um so you, you nobody's gonna be able to teach nick bolton to be two inches taller and run a faster 40 so that's unfortunate because it, he just has everything else. But if he had all of his current abilities and prototypical linebacker size, he probably would have never played at Missouri. So, <laughs> um, so you said at one point you had him slated into the first round. Yeah, I would have said he was probably late first round uh, during the season. Um, now I think I would put him about mid second round, um, maybe the. 50th pick or so it's 50 to 60 range is probably where i think he'll go yeah i have second round as well um i have a bad uh tendency to overrate mizzou players in the draft and think they'll be drafted higher or think they'll be drafted at all when they aren't so i'm kind of taking a a different stance with my list this year and i'm gonna try to be a little bit more realistic but it may come across as pessimistic 
but I'm basically just trying to correct for previous errors in previous seasons. But I do have him uh, in the second round, and I maybe with him I could be a little bit more optimistic and think he could go as high as 40th. Actually, 40th to the Broncos is something I've seen a couple places. So, man, they just draft all Mizzou players. So yeah. why not? <laughs> yeah, they love Mizzou players. All right, so. I don't feel like we will have differing opinions on this, but uh, are you anything else you want to say about Nick Bolton? Not I, really. I actually, uh, I thought of something. I, I'll i never get over the fact that we didn't get to see a full season of him and Cale Garrett playing together the year that uh, Cale Garrett went down with that pectoral injury. Man, two of the best linebackers in the country, honestly. Yeah. Playing on the playing together that the beginning of that season. Right. Special. And also, I'll never forget that you, Kyle, were – Early, early, early on Nick Bolton being a game-changing player at Mizzou. I want to say before his freshman season, you drafted him into our seven-on-seven draft. And so you are early on him. He didn't really do a whole lot Mm -hmm. that season, but he had already been impressing in like preseason workouts and camps and stuff. Yeah, yeah. He was was impressive from the get-go and um physically i wanted him to play like on the line so i think that's what i i drafted him on for right. our seven on seven team because he was kind of that thicker frame so he could probably play o-line but would be a beast on the d-line too or whatever right. or whatever i was gonna have him play yeah for our like nfl street style seven on seven game yeah he i mean i knew he was gonna be good but he he surpassed even my expectations that were high for him um okay so second guy on my list is tyree gillespie same and uh let me pull up what nfl.com has to say about him they say uh safety prospect with the physical and athletic profile to make it in the league but finding the right spot for him could be the key gillespie frequently roamed as the single high safety in the missouri scheme he plays with decent instincts on the back end but might, might not have enough range to offer over-the-top help at the next level. He can be fluid in pursuit when running the alleys and working near the line of scrimmage, but will need to improve tackle angles and prevent slip-outs and misses. He appears to have the length and athleticism to handle some man coverage on matchup tight ends, but the lack of ball production is a bit of a concern. Now, Tyree Gillespie is pretty much a perfect example of a guy that's gone up the board since the season happened kind of done the opposite of what nick bolton did where i mean yeah he he's been a staple of missouri's defense for years now and uh he had a good season but truly he he has most of his draft hype has come in the last month or two and part of the reason why is because he ran a 4.38 40 yard dash at mizzou's pro day which any anything under like four or five is considered elite speed so he's got elite speed but not only that but he's 210 pounds he is not small i mean he's think uh i mean larry i think he's heavier than larry roundtree so imagine i mean that's just an absolute truck um coming for you at faster than four four speed is ridiculous nfl.com has roundtree at 211 and gillespie at 207 oh okay so right there though within five pounds of each other uh, and NFL.com has him as a, they give him a grade of 6.12 out of eight. And they say good backup who could become a starter. Yeah, I think he's he's definitely going to be a special teams player at first, I think. And then may find his way into uh, a starting rotation, kind of depending where he is. I think, like that article said, it'll, it'll depend on what team he's playing for and how well he does in, in special teams. But, Man, he's he's got the opportunity though to make some noise in the open field on on kickoff or or punt team or whatever it is because he can just fly down the field and yeah. if he hits you, man, yeah. uh, Godspeed. Yeah, he had some impressive plays like uh, when he would come up towards the line of scrimmage and like blow up a screen pass or something like that. I mean, I just remember him just like laying guys out. Yeah, and, uh, and we forgot to mention with Nick Bolton the play against Tennessee that'll be like one of the you know it's like a, a legendary. It's a classic. Um, like highlight reel play where he just completely stuffed the it's running like back brick wall at the line of scrimmage when mm-hmm. he was like, or and it was like at the goal line. Yeah, he was going in for a touchdown. But I mean, Tyree Gillespie has some serious hitting power because he can go so fast and he is so big. Yeah, he had his best game of the season against Alabama, very first game of the year. 
he was probably fresh and uh because i mean think about it from a personal standpoint you just are flying around the field running into people's at top speed that can probably take a toll on your body after a while when you're doing it week in and week out um so he looked very fresh though against alabama at the beginning of this past season and i remember him having some great tackles uh against Najee harris who is not an easy guy to bring down whatsoever so i think he kind of made a name for himself uh in that game yeah it's interesting to me with his speed that nfl.com says he might not have enough range to offer over the top help at the next level i don't I'm not sure, and maybe I'm missing something there on that analysis, but it seems like he, in my opinion, he has enough speed to cover a lot of ground. Yeah, I you. I disagree with, with that take on NFL.com or whatever yeah. you're reading it on. Yeah. Um, okay, so Tyree Gillespie, um, I, I hope I'm wrong here. I've got him going as one of the first couple picks in the fifth round. I'm going to say fourth round. Okay. Um. yeah I could definitely see him going fourth round even like right in the middle of the fourth round um, but again I'm tempering my expectations based on uh, perfectly reasonable previous experience yeah I mean once you get into that part of the draft it's just team need it's yeah. uh you just it's a crapshoot yeah he is a lock to be drafted though for sure there's, there's no doubt about that and in my opinion, end of list on for sure, Mizzou guys getting drafted. Yeah, locks to get drafted. That's that's it. Uh, but I've seen, spoiler alert, I have seen mock drafts that have all six of these guys getting drafted. Really? Yeah. Um, but yeah, we'll we'll, we'll get there. Um, all right. So my next player on my list is Larry Roundtree the third. Is that what you have? The hardest decision for me on ranking these guys was the three and four spots. I have Larry Borum. Okay. That's who I have fourth. Yep. So that makes sense. Um, let's start. We'll just start with Roundtree. Um, he, according to NFL.com, was graded a 6.0 out of 8, and they have him as a developmental traits-based prospect. So... Yeah, they're basically saying they don't even know if he'll make a, a, a squad yeah. um, out of training camp. Yeah, I mean, when you watch Larry Roundtree, I mean, he absolutely physically is is capable of being an NFL running back. I mean, he's, like you said, 210 pounds. Uh, he's, I, one, I think, I think the most uh, surprising trait about him is how quick his feet is, mm-hmm. uh, how quick his feet are. Mm-hmm. He's very agile. He can move in and out of cuts, like, surprisingly well for his size, and because he's has a pretty thick build he's broad shouldered uh, but and so he'll run over you but he really can juke surprisingly well and that's th- something he did a lot um at mizzou one thing i do think he's gonna have to work on is just his patience like waiting for blocks waiting for those lanes to open up because he wants to run so aggressively he kind of gets ahead of himself sometimes and just wants to plow through and when i think that he can probably show a little bit more patience look for the look for those lanes to open up a little bit and that's basically exactly what his draft profile overview says like he sometimes is running out of control and they say that he needs to that he has average very average vision and creativity Um, but they do say that he could become a solid backup at the nfl level and i think i don't know i think skill wise i think he's got it i mean i don't know i think he was one of the better running backs in the country last year and he carried the Missouri offense from time to time mm-hmm. and they kind of just let it be the Larry Roundtree show. Yeah. In a, uh, you know, a handful of games, 30 plus carries and like yeah. multiple games. Yeah. So talk I about think, durability, right? Yeah. He's shown that and he climbed the Mizzou all time leaderboards and record books as far as rushing goes. So like he's second all time now to only Brad Smith, right? He's mm-hmm. number one running yeah. back rushing yards. So that doesn't come easy. Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you. I think Larry will. I I have him getting drafted in the seventh round. Same. Um, but again, I wouldn't be surprised to see him go in the sixth. Wouldn't be surprised if he was undrafted. Wouldn't be surprised if he didn't make a roster. At your, at, you know, I he'll be he'll be signed by right. as a undrafted free agent at the very least. At yeah. the very least, but I wouldn't be surprised if he didn't make the cut for the fifty-three man roster, and it wouldn't be surprised if he's a starter in two years. You know, yeah. like I feel like the. 
the expectations for him are just kind of all over the place because I don't know. He just he's a gifted player. I think somebody will take a chance on him in the draft because there's potential and he shows flashes, you know, where it's like, okay, yeah, he's got it. And I think somebody's gonna take a chance on him with a draft pick because they don't wanna wait around and see what happens in undrafted free agency. I think um they'll wanna secure him with a draft pick at some point. Yeah. So yeah, I could see I could see a team maybe reaching a little bit for him if they have a need for running back depth just because he I think has shown that he can be special. Yeah. As far as a guy that's just kind of a high floor you can always count on him he's he's always healthy <laughs> always given his his best effort i think there's there's a place for a player like that so kyle you were supposed to like maybe disagree with me a little bit on my pessimism but if you've got larry roundtree going in the seventh round as i do that doesn't leave a lot of room for the last three players that we have to talk about as far as them getting drafted you are correct um, but you had Larry it's, Borum above him. It's so now you, time so to be got, a little more pessimistic. Yes. So you've got Larry Borum going in the seventh round as well? Sixth or seventh, okay. yeah. Um, Larry Borum, 6'5", 320, played tackle at Missouri. I don't know that he's going to play tackle at the NFL level because I just I don't know that he has the lateral quickness that he needs to play tackle at the professional level. I mean, when you think of an NFL tackle – you think of a guy on the outside that's moving, shifting their feet quickly, um, getting out in pass protection and throwing Von Miller around. You yeah. know, I just, I'm not sure I can see that happens a lot. Larry Borum being able to defend against a player like Von Miller, you know, because that's the kind of player, a, a speed edge rusher that right. you're going to have to defend against. Yeah, honestly, NFL tackles are some of the most athletic people in the world. Exactly. <laughs> as far as how well they move right with the size that they have to be to play that position exactly i 100 percent agree with that but um you know he's got a great strong upper body um i think that in certain schemes he could be really useful and kind of a power scheme or maybe uh as a guard i think he could have more success there maybe playing the uh, playing on the interior uh it just kind of depends on where he lands but you know one thing that's kind of an intangible about larry borum is just i just wouldn't count him out you know i didn't think that he'd be able to play tackle at the college level Mm -hmm. and i remember when he um was first kind of slotted to play tackle i was surprised by that but just because of his because of his size and he ended up uh keeping the quarterback clean all year long in both of his seasons he played very very well so i i wouldn't i wouldn't count him out if you give him a shot he'll probably surprise yeah athleticism is going to hold him back i think everybody knows that and every evaluator is pricing that in to his draft position um i've definitely seen him seen projections where he goes as high as the sixth round um but i'm being uh extra cautious here and i have him going undrafted but obviously i think i think he'll definitely get signed in a undrafted free agent situation Mm -hmm. at the very least just like roundtree but i do have roundtree getting drafted and larry borum not but i be happily surprised i'll say borum is a seventh rounder okay so uh we could have another mix up on our hands here i have damon hazelton as my next most likely player to be drafted i've got josh blitzo okay yeah that's another i feel like there's definitely like the larry's and then then a tear break and then yes uh hazelton and blitzo and you could kind of flip flip flop those two Um, I was trying to find this mock that had several Missouri players. Um, Go ahead uh, with uh, your analysis of Josh Bledsoe, and I'll look up this mock mock draft I was looking at. Yeah, and I mean, there really is a pretty significant tier uh, drop here as far as NFL prospects go. But Josh Bledsoe played very well at Missouri, had a couple of really strong seasons uh, playing kind of the safety nickel Mm -hmm. um, hybrid position and uh he's a he's a strong player especially for a secondary player he's good strength um i love his just competitive spirit i felt like he was just always playing hard and um just wanted to perform at the highest level possible and i'll always remember him kind of saving the game against lsu um and the the fourth down play him kind of making the diving uh deflection if you will to to save the game another just like 
legendary highlight reel play that will for sure play on montages forever for sure yeah great college player um really wasn't a very highly rated recruit coming out of high school i kind of even remember thinking i'm not sure where this guy's gonna fit in but uh really surprised me and how uh productive he was in college but as far as the nfl goes i mean he's not very fast uh he doesn't have the most like fluid hips which are very important for a player in the secondary i i don't really see him being able to play at the professional level at least not consistently um and i don't think he's going to be drafted but obviously like i like all any of these players that i'm pessimistic pessimistic about of course i'd love to be wrong yeah um i agree with you completely i have him being undrafted but I found this CBS Sports mock draft, and maybe they're just trying to be different, but they've got uh, in the sixth round, in the back half of the sixth round, they have Larry Roundtree, Larry Borum, and Joshua Bledsoe all going in the sixth round. Wow. And also, randomly, uh, someone named Zach Davidson, a tight end from Central Missouri. Yeah. So if you search Missouri... I've heard some hype about him. There's four players from Missouri going in the uh, sixth round, according to this mock draft. Um, yeah, I don't have much to add on Joshua Bledsoe. I think uh, he'll be remembered more as like a part of that duo mm-hmm. and uh, two just really solid safeties. Maybe, you know, I'm going to show my age here, but as far as a safety tandem, I'm thinking back. I don't really remember two safeties being that quality at the same time. Um when you talk about two guys that are potentially going to be drafted or it definitely will at least make uh, training camp. Yeah. I mean, I, I really, I mean, Braylon Webb, Anthony Sherrill's, but yeah. I'm not sure any of those guys ever really played at the same time. So yeah, it was, you, you might be right about the, the best duo that we've had in a while. Mm-hmm. All right. So that leaves us with Damon Hazelton and he's right there with Bledsoe in my opinion as like a fringe seventh round pick, probably undrafted free agent. I think he's a kind of a weird case because I think he has the measurables and like the route running ability and he's put it on tape to show teams that he can do it. I think at the next level, like he's a good enough route runner to play in the NFL Mm -hmm. and he's good enough at like going up and getting the ball. He doesn't quite have NFL speed, but you can get around that if you're solid elsewhere. Mm Mm-hmm. He just weirdly enough couldn't produce at Missouri. Couldn't just put it together. Maybe couldn't get on the same page with the quarterbacks, but, you know, he was a thousand yard receiver at uh, Virginia Tech and came in and was just kind of had a ho hum season. I had one of his best games, like when he hadn't been a starter for a couple games. And um, one of his better games was like a garbage time touchdown that was uh, thrown to him by. Uh, cook I think so yeah just a weird season from a guy that had a lot of hype coming into it and like preseason I was thinking like oh yeah we've got an NFL caliber wide receiver coming in this will be amazing and when he struggled to find the field some of the time I just had obviously that's going to impact his draft stock yeah I agree um I feel like he even kind of showed a physicality on his tape at Virginia Tech that I'm not really sure we ever really saw at Mizzou um But yeah, I mean, that was exactly kind of what I thought as well was just he had a really up and down, like inconsistent season and kind of a head scratching thing because he'd start sometimes and wouldn't really play in other games. And I don't think he was hurt. Right. So, you know, clearly there was maybe some behind the scenes stuff going on that we didn't know about or who knows. That's it's all speculation at this point. But yeah, it was it was very up and down season and he didn't really play a whole lot yeah, at times and it was kind of hard to evaluate him almost, but he's very talented. He's shown yeah, in all of his seasons right. across multiple teams that he, he has a lot of potential and he's talented, but yeah, three collegiate teams. Yeah. It just has to be consistent. Yeah. I just wonder, I feel like if I'm an NFL GM, I'm just, I could almost pretty easily convince myself that he just, couldn't quite find the right situation to flourish and bouncing from team to team to team, you know, not getting that continuity really probably hindered his development in any one program. So I could definitely talk myself into him based on the route running and just catching ability. Mm -hmm. 
is there anybody else that's even like remotely fringe possibly gonna is there anybody that's gonna get signed as an undrafted free agent that we just like it's not we know they're not gonna get drafted but i'm not i know i'm putting you on the spot here you we were specifically talking about these six players honestly i don't think so because this is really it as far as like the graduating seniors that aren't that decided not to return um i can't really think of anybody else i mean the offense didn't really lose anybody outside of hazelton and roundtree yeah yeah i don't i don't i can't i'm sure there's going to be somebody that we didn't think of but we could be blanking on a name that will be announced as an undrafted i really i really think that's it though so uh producer cameron are the broncos drafting a quarterback who knows they i'm i'm ready for that three-man competition between drew lock teddy bridgewater and whoever they draft draft. yeah what they have the ninth overall pick yeah and panthers have the eighth and i saw a mock draft that had the panthers that had uh justin fields falling to the panthers at eight and them drafting him i would take it but based on Broncos Twitter, they <laughs> oh yeah, they're all about. <laughs> they fields. want to get that Justin Fields. Yeah, well, if they want to trade up to eight to secure him with uh, trade with the Panthers, then that'd be fine too. I, Do you really I, think they would take Justin Fields if uh, if he dropped to eight? <laughs> Maybe I, I mean potentially. I personally want the quarterbacks to be off the board, and that mean that the Panthers can draft the offensive tackle from Oregon. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's what I hope happens. Penesu. Yep. I don't think he'll be there, but could be. I've seen him and Justin Fields in a couple of mocks. And I'm That'd like, be that seems, a fantastic yeah. pick if they if they could get him. If either one of those are available, I think they probably do it. Or if if Fields is available, I bet they're getting calls of some team trying to get up to eight mm. to draft mm. him. I've heard there's a lot of interest for the Broncos pick at nine, yeah. so I don't know if they will actually pick at nine or if they'll keep yeah. it. Yeah, I mean, the possibilities, I feel like, are – yeah that's i mean i have no idea what they would even do i thought it was weird that they brought bridgewater in but that also doesn't mean they're not going to try and get somebody else yeah um that's part of what makes the nfl draft so fun i think is like that those top 10 picks Mm -hmm. there's so many big name college players that have been around a couple years and you just never know what's going to happen that team team wants someone bad enough they're gonna there's gonna be well it's like a cluster trade in the in the i think the top of the draft is just going to be quarterback 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 i mean there's going to be i've seen mock drafts that are like five yeah. quarterbacks in like the first 10 picks yeah, yeah. i've seen and then mocks no one in the like, rest of the first round yeah i've seen mocks where it's like the first five picks are all quarterbacks yeah like because of trades and stuff mm-hmm. well it's oh, just a fun God. way to get a kind of an inside look almost into what teams truly want you know it's not a rumor it's is who they picked and mm-hmm. it's maybe a foreshadowing into you know what they might do in the team's future and that kind of stuff and it just opens pandora's box of of uh hypothetical (laughs) situations but i i love the nfl draft and especially that first night is always so much fun i'm gonna jump in here real quick because there's a bit of news that we forgot Mm. Uh, markel etsy is going to arkansas oh yeah so he's dead to us now just kidding we we wish him well he that would have been super random but i forgot that he's from arkansas so that makes it a little less yeah terrible but it was still surprising yeah Okay, back to NFL draft. Back to NFL draft. Okay, uh, Trevor Lawrence, first overall. Yeah. Uh, Zach Wilson or whatever whatever his name is, second overall. Okay, now I want to hear who are the 49ers at third overall? Who are they picking? And who would you pick if you were the 49ers GM? Okay, I got to be completely honest with you. I haven't researched the quarterbacks all that much because I've just been thinking none of the ones worth getting are going to be there when the Panthers are picking. <laughs> so... I'm not going to be the best at answering this. I feel okay, like... Okay, well, I'll give you some options. Mac Jones, Trey Lance, Justin Fields are the next. That's pretty much I, it. If I'm the 49ers, I don't. I honestly don't feel great about any of those players at three. If I'm the 49ers GM, I try to find somebody that desperately wants one of those quarterbacks and just trade back. Well, that's like when you're like, oh, yeah, the Broncos Twitter is hyping up Justin Fields. I'm like, I don't even know if I would be like, happy with that like if it works out yeah obviously but yeah I, and also i feel like i was more optimistic about fields than it seems like public opinion is, yeah has, is I, right now i'm right there with you um so that would be the only one that i think i take at three if i'm the 49ers i agree 
uh, that's going to be kind of the first fascinating thing that happens, I think, because I think picks one and two are pretty much a foregone foregone conclusion that uh, those two guys are going to get picked. But the third pick is really where the draft begins, and uh, because the 49ers have just there's been so much uh, just rumors and stuff floating about uh, what they're going to do, and it seems like a foregone conclusion they're going to pick a quarterback. Which is but, still kind of weird to me. And that Jimmy Garoppolo's mm-hmm. like gone and out of the picture next year. They went to a Super Bowl with him. They yeah. did. Yeah. Uh, so and he was just hurt last year. Yeah. So yeah, I literally was just looking that up. I was like, I he's wonder, still there, right? I yeah. wonder <laughs> if it's gonna be a classic smokescreen. Yeah. I actually, I I think there's just there's too much, there's too much uh, smoke to yeah, no to be a, a smokescreen. Smoke That's uh-huh. doesn't make sense. <laughs> I think they're picking a quarterback, but. I just don't know that any of those three guys are better than Jimmy Garoppolo, honestly. You could say, like, the most solid idea is a smokescreen, and I'm immediately going to be like, oh, it could be a smokescreen. <laughs> yeah. It could be. Yeah, so I'm I'm excited to see what the 49ers do, but um, I wish the Chiefs had a pick, but I'm totally uh, happy that they have Orlando, uh, whatever his name is. Orlando Pace. Orlando, uh, Orlando Bloom. Pro Bowl. <laughs> instead. Pro Bowler, offensive lineman, or Pirates of the Caribbean. <laughs> I'm a real buccaneer <laughs> or uh legolas yeah. um the last time the panthers picked in the top 10 they drafted a gentleman by the name of christian mccaffrey heard of him that worked out <laughs> quite well quite well so i think they're gonna n- just knock it out of the park with whoever they get all right last hypothetical producer cameron who is the quarterback for week one for the denver broncos justin fields Right. Whoa! Wow. No, I'm just kidding. Teddy Bridgewater. Okay. Teddy Bridgewater. Teddy too close. Over Drew Lock. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, Drew. I guess we'll see how how much Drew and Locks I, benefited from Peyton Manning. I believe in Drew Lock and the tutelage that he received under I, Peyton Manning. I would love the tutelage. W- who do I want? I want Drew Lock to be the guy. That's what I would love to have. That's so we agree. Oh yeah. Then I can keep looking at this guy all day. He's looking at the bobblehead for folks that aren't watching on YouTube. We have a bobblehead. <laughs> so that's another reason to come take a look at the YouTube channel. Is look at this nice trophy. You can see our, that's also you can see Drew Locke. You can see our massive trophy. Some Cardinals players. I forget who they are. And, of course, Spider-Man. Stan Musil. I've heard Mus- of him. <laughs> Musical. Musical. <laughs> all right, Get everybody. I'm not going to try and do his last name. Shane Deist. That's easy. That's all I got for the folks today, guys. All right. Wrap it up. Wrap it up. Um, guys, you can find us on Spotify. Apple Podcast, Google Podcast. We're on Twitter and Instagram at Mizzou Sports Pod at Gmail. And shoot. <laughs> Holy moly. Holy cow. Uh, you can email us at Missouri Sports Pod at Gmail.com. You can find our t shirts and stickers on our online shop, Missouri Sports Pod.bigcartel.com. Or you can get over on to our Patreon, patreon.com slash Missouri Sports Pod, and subscribe to the level where you can get some swag. We'll send it right to you. Uh, Thank you, everyone, for listening. We will see you next week after the draft.